This podcast is brought to you by healthrangerstore.com. Lab-tested clean foods and supplements for immune function, long-term storage, and survival applications. Every purchase helps fund this free speech video platform. Thank you for your support. Welcome to this exclusive podcast for prepwithmike.com. This podcast is about how to make your own oxygen absorbers very inexpensively so that you can put them into uh, buckets or storage containers and just remove all the oxygen from the air to protect your food, your firearms, whatever you got in there that you don't want to oxidize. Now, as I said, this is for prepwithmike.com. That's a new site we've got. And it it forwards to a special page on the Health Ranger store that shows you all of the in-stock uh, store items there. It's real time. Everything in stock is shown there. And then on the top of that page, we have podcasts and videos that we're adding that all offer hands-on practical information for survival and preparedness. And this is one of those. So let's get right to it. How do you make your own oxygen absorbers? Because they're very expensive to purchase. Uh, but as it turns out, Oxygen absorbers are, are very easy and inexpensive to make. So all you have to really do is just get some steel wool and get some table salt and have a, a little piece of cloth or uh, it could be a paper towel, but I prefer to use something like an old t-shirt, for example. And all you got to do is take that steel wool and you want the really fine steel wool because you want the steel wool itself to have high surface area. And you're going to take some uh, fine ground table salt. And you might want to wear a pair of gloves to do this, but you're just going to kind of massage the salt into the steel wool for just a few seconds. Just make sure that the wool is, in effect, coated with all of that salt. And then you just fold it into uh, a piece of cloth or just basically fold a piece of cloth around it. Staple that cloth together with a few staples. And you chuck that into your pail or or barrel or whatever you're using to store something, and then you seal it up. You seal it up airtight. And what happens over the next few hours, then the steel wool absorbs all of the oxygen inside the barrel, leaving, well, mostly nitrogen, a little bit of carbon dioxide, and probably a few other gases, uh, argon, and so on. But it's mostly just going to be nitrogen because nitrogen is, what, 79% of the atmosphere anyway, and nitrogen is inert. The only thing in air that harms your stuff is oxygen, and you can take it out by forcing steel wool to rust, and that's what the salt is doing. So let's, let's talk about a little bit of chemistry here. When a piece of metal rusts, what is it doing? It's oxidizing, which means that oxygen atoms from the air are combining with the metal to oxidize it and form rust. Now, in the air, oxygen is normally found in the form of O2, two oxygen atoms bound to each other, bound together, right? That's O2. But oxygen is uh, very volatile. And in the presence of certain types of metals that have the right, well, really the right electron orbital structure on their outer shell, they will then grab on to an oxygen, grab that oxygen, they will be oxidized and they will form rust and that will take the oxygen out of the air and, in effect, lock it into that rust. So what you end up having inside your pail or your barrel is rusted steel wool, which is harmless. It's no problem. You know, you're sacrificing the steel wool to accelerate a process of rusting, which is oxidation, that pulls oxygen out of the air inside your barrel, thereby reducing all the oxygen, basically locking up all the oxygen, and giving you a mostly nitrogen environment that has very, very long shelf life. So when you're storing firearms, you definitely want to do this because oxidation causes rust of firearms. You don't want rusted firearms, right? Uh, same thing with uh, food. You don't want food to oxidize and, and become rancid. Oxidation ruins the shelf life of food. So you can stock up on a bunch of steel wool, get some cheap salt, which is dirt cheap anyway, and you can make your own oxygen absorbers this way. And the cool thing is that, you know how normal oxygen absorbers, if you accidentally leave them out, they're ruined because they've absorbed all the oxygen that, that they will ever absorb. But with steel wool and salt, as long as you keep them apart, they're not going into that chemical reaction of oxidation and rust. And that means that you can stock up on lots of steel wool and you can stock up on lots of 
salt and uh, you won't be using them up until you, you know, combine them. And then the oxidation process will begin. Now, there is one caveat to this, and that's if, if you store steel wool in a place that is very humid, uh, it will tend to rust anyway. So just store your steel wool in an air-conditioned environment until you're ready to use it in this way. And now I know one of the main questions is how much should I use? Uh, the answer is, it doesn't matter if you use too much. So what I would do, if I were storing, let's say, a 30-gallon drum or a 55-gallon drum worth of stuff, I would use an entire piece of steel wool. You know how they're sold in chunks, kind of like fist-sized chunks? I would use the whole thing for a big drum like that. If I were using just a small pail, like a three-gallon pail or a five-gallon pail, I would use just one-tenth of one of those primary pieces of steel wool, just a tenth of it. But if you happen to use, let's say, one-fifth of it, uh, so what? There's no harm in taking more oxygen out of the air. I mean, eventually, there's no oxygen left inside your container. That's the whole point. And then the oxidation will stop. And so the way you'll know that happens is later on, you go back, I don't know, 10 years later, you open the bucket back up, you look in there and you have a piece of steel wool that is half oxidized. That means that you had more than enough steel wool and that the oxygen all got locked up into the, the steel, you know, the, the rusting process. And so mission accomplished. You got all the oxygen out of there and whatever else you had stored in there then was never exposed to oxygen, which is the whole point. So that's how you make your own oxygen absorber. It's really simple, very easy, basic chemistry and uses very low cost ingredients. So have fun with that one. I do tend to use uh, gloves when I'm messing around with steel wool. You know, I don't like getting little steel shards in my, in my fingers, <laughs> if you can avoid that. And also just remember that it's the sodium chloride that really accelerates this oxidation of the steel. Uh, the steel would oxidize on its own anyway over time, but the salt makes it very rapid and salt is a powerful oxidizer. Salt will make steel rust big time. And I remember many years ago, I stored a chunk of salt, like a salt lamp on a steel rack and uh, went back a few years later and the steel had been completely eaten away by water dripping off of the salt lamp because salt attracts water too. So that was a mistake, but it taught me something very important, which is that salt eats through steel. Kind of makes you wonder, how do battleships float, right? Because it's salt water and battleships are made out of steel hulls, right? <laughs> there you go. Those of you who are sailors and who've been in the Navy, you will know the answer to that and basically it comes down to a, a whole lot of maintenance. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of maintenance to keep all those ships floating because they are in a high salt environment that likes to eat through everything that's made out of metal. If you've ever been you know, on an aircraft carrier or something stationed on one, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But thank you for listening. Check out more podcasts and more videos with practical preparedness solutions at the website prepwithmike.com. Lots more coming. Thank you for listening. A global reset is coming. And that's why I've recorded a new nine-hour audiobook. It's called The Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide. It's free. It's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.